Hey there, my name is Anthony Romano, and in this video I'm going to tell you about the biggest bullshit ketogenic diet supplements that are really pushed through by a lot of marketers, and besides the fact that I think there's a lot of BS marketing around keto with you know plans from people who don't know what they're talking about, there's definitely a lot of push from the supplement industry, which has several really good keto supplements, but then they have a lot of just BS supplements you really don't need at all. So these are going to be the top BS keto supplements you don't need and why. So many people here probably have been exposed to some sort of ad at one point or another for one at least one of these supplements I'm going to go into. Now, I'm going to start off with keto protein, okay? Funny enough, you're going to learn a lot about the actual mechanisms of keto in this video by me simply talking about the supplements, and you'll learn about how the supplement industry, at least from some brands and some companies, completely gets it wrong. So, keto protein, okay? Any brand that tells you you need a ketogenic protein is, and by that ketogenic protein being protein mixed with a bunch of fats and a certain ratio of carb is completely wrong and they generally don't know what they're talking about. I have a video on this on keto protein and really the only use for it where it does make sense is if somebody is trying to bulk up in a certain way or perhaps just use it as a meal replacement where powdered food is a luxury for you and you simply just don't want to put up with eating food <laughs> or making your own shake with perhaps eggs, avocados, protein, or even just protein. Because the biggest thing is that people are afraid that if they have just protein shakes on their own, it will make them gain weight or prevent loss of weight. Now, any protein powder that does not contain carbohydrates is a keto protein. The number one requirement for ketosis is no carbs. So if somebody is completely fasted and they haven't ate in a week, they're in deeper ketosis than when they're eating ketogenically because they're not eating any carbs at all still and they're not eating any food and their body has to deepen ketosis. So there's no truth to anything that you have to you know, jack up your fats in order to be in ketosis. The primary driver of ketosis is low carbs. From there, when the carbs are the picture, more fats will deepen the level of ketosis, but a lot of people get it twisted and think, oh, I had, you know, 60 grams of 70 grams of carbs today, right? I'll just up my fats. That's actually going to make you gain weight because you're not going to let your body get into ketosis and then you're adding in these fats, which is going to be more prone to being stored when you have carbs and fats together. So, keto protein, you don't have to be afraid of the insulin necessarily. Necessarily, every time you eat protein, your body's going to need some insulin to flush it into your muscles and, of course, deliver protein wherever else it needs to be delivered. So you're going to get insulin anytime you eat protein. Of course, mixing macronutrients is going to dampen that insulin response. But as far as selling you on a protein powder that's dramatically higher in calories, when you can literally just add a tablespoon of MCT oil or some other fat and then get the same amount of calories in addition to a protein shake is way better. If you want to watch more about tips on how to have your protein on a fat loss ketogenic diet, I have a video on that. It's one of my bigger videos on my page at the moment. So keto protein. It's BS, you don't need it. The only person that could use it is somebody who really has a lot of extra money to blow and just wants to have extra meal replacements in case they're not trying to necessarily lose weight on keto. So the next thing is keto BCA slash keto pre-workout. Okay, I grouped these together. So it's like a two for one here because any supplement that has example, you know, a, a preset use and they just added in exogenous ketones is always going to be What's up? Just wake up. It's a bit messy in here, but <laughs> dog's just taking a nap. So any supplement that has exogenous ketones added just to complement another product, right? That is generally going to give you not the best of both worlds. It's going to give you a little bit of each product and it's an excuse to dial down the dose of both the products that are combined. So you're not going to get a full serving of exogenous ketones and you're not gonna get a full serving of pre-workout or BCAs. 
it's typically just an excuse to make people think that when they're on keto, they need to have these ketones in there in order to stay in ketosis or perhaps to get better performance benefit. And ketones will give you a performance benefit. And I use exogenous ketones all the time and I stand by their usage. However, when they're packaged into products as a combination product, it tends to be a rip and you're not getting your value out of either of the two products combined into one. So that's why it's generally better for you to just get the exogenous ketones separately. And if you take BCAs or pre-workout, just add in the ketones as needed. You also wanna keep in mind, you're not gonna wanna be locked into taking a scoop of exogenous ketones every time you train because what's gonna happen is, let's say you have that pre-workout. Your body's gonna use the exogenous ketones before it starts using its own ketones. So of course it's going to be an energy benefit and of course it will ramp up fat burning but you're going to need to run through the ketones you just consumed before you start burning your own. And of course, your own fatty acids as fuel. So essentially, you don't want to be locked into taking that every time you're taking a pre-workout because if you just buy a regular pre-workout, if you like that, or just have like a cup of coffee or something, you're not going to be setting your body's production line of ketones back a step. So in general, Keep the dosing to yourself. If you like exogenous ketones, I absolutely stand by exogenous ketones, but when they're combined with BCAs or pre-workout or something, it tends to be a ripoff. And unless you find a product that has a full saturation dose of ketones in it, like example, 12 grams of exogenous ketone salts, combined with a full dose of like BCAs, instead of just you know small quantities of both, so people see both terms on the label, then that would be an acceptable use. But even then, I don't like being locked into taking BCAs or pre-workout every time I take my ketones. So next one is raspberry ketones. This is a huge ripoff. <laughs> I'll just call it as I see it. There's never been a study in humans that has shown that these things have had any benefit. There's been some rodent studies that raspberry ketones could stimulate adiponectin and basically prevent excess fat storage in rodents. Overall, raspberry ketones were popular because they were on Dr. Oz which I have a video on of me roasting Dr. Oz, basically. <laughs> uh, I have that video on my page as well. But overall, raspberry ketones are generally a rip. People often, in the past, I've seen some brands try to market ketone products, but in reality, it's just raspberry ketones. So if you're going to get a ketone product, get exogenous ketones or ketone salts or ketone esters, which are a step above salts and they're harder to find. But those are the ketone products that I would say are worth using and ket raspberry ketones are one of the ones that tries to imitate it, at least from the marketing perspective, because on the performance perspective, it definitely does not imitate it at all. And it's a huge waste of your money. <laughs> if it's in something, if it's in a complex of a bunch of other things, I mean, I doubt it will do any harm, but you know, at the same time, it's not worth buying for the sake of it. Now, the last one, is keto bombs, okay? And I have an honorable mention after this one. Keto bombs, any sort of keto supplement that says along the lines of the protein, right? This is still on the meal replacement side of ketone supplements. These are the things that example, throw this into your, your coffee or put this into your smoothies or your shake or put this into your protein, right? Some sort of basically fat bomb is typically what they are. They sell like these powdered fat bombs to put into various recipes. And now, these can be very useful if you put them in a recipe. So, and they are tasty. I've used them in the past. They're a luxury, okay? But the reason I have them on this list of BS supplements is because of the marketing approach of a lot of these things, where basically they'll have these fat bomb supplements and they make it sound as if you need to take them in order to be in ketosis or to sustain ketosis. As I said before, the only requirement to be in ketosis is lack of carbohydrates, not the presence of fat. The presence of fat is often a byproduct due to the lack of carbohydrates. So these can be useful, right? Keto bomb supplements, fat bomb supplements that you put into your coffee, They're, you can use them for baking, right? Of course, make sure they have a list of sweeteners you're comfortable with consuming. I always prefer stuff with stevia rather than like a bunch of other sulfate, potassium, sucralose, and always watch out for artificial dyes. But these things are useful, maybe add in a little bit of a recipe, but they are absolutely not needed for the sake of the ketogenic diet altogether. They can be used as a benefit to make your coffee better, for example, or to make 
a shake tastes better if you like that, but they don't need to be in the shake. Same example with the protein. They don't need to be in there to somehow magically prevent the protein from spiking your insulin in a certain way, right? So as long as there's no carbs, you're set and this is ketogenic. And for the last thing I'll say on fat bomb supplements is typically the fats that are actually in it are just going to be MCT, but they might not be from the highest quality MCT, which is caprylic acid. I believe Dave Asprey from Bulletproof has a patent on caprylic acid, but there's, I believe, maybe a couple other MCT oil manufacturers that actually do make pure caprylic acid, which is the best MCT you can get. So make sure you're getting one that actually has quality fats, because if it has lauric acid, for example, which is another MCT that's often powdered and put into these things, it can upset your stomach more likely than other MCTs. So the last honorable mention is coconut oil. I love coconut oil. I cook with it all the time. It's one of the best things I cook with. But the reason I have it as an honorable mention and as the fifth BS supplement is because people taking it for the sake of supplementing with it. It's great to cook with. If you like eating it, then eat it. But if you're going to take coconut oil because you believe it has some sort of properties to it just because it has MCTs, you would be way better off taking MCT oil and the caprylic acid I was talking about. So C8 MCT. Basically, coconut oil is where they derive most of the MCTs. And you get caprylic acid, capric acid, lauric acid. And essentially, lauric acid is the largest of those medium chain fats. So it's able to convert at a very high rate to energy that can actually upset your stomach dramatically more so than C8 MCT. So people are taking spoonfuls of coconut oil all the time. You can get more out of an MCT oil that's high quality in less of a dose than you can with coconut oil. And there's less risk involved as far as upsetting your stomach. So coconut oil is great to cook with. If you, There's plenty of things you can bake with it and I use all the time. I stand by it. But as far as the push for it as a supplemental use, as in it's going to make you burn more fat, perhaps in some small amounts, but you just would, for that purpose, you would be better off just getting a high quality MCT oil or even a low quality MCT oil, honestly. So, cause, oh, last thing I'll say, cause I've seen places that say they sell a keto coffee or something and they'll just throw in like regular non grass fed butter from like Walmart and then they'll throw in coconut oil, right? Maybe not even high quality virgin coconut oil. And then they just have the coffee. And this is kind of like to mimic the bulletproof coffee type thing. But when I'm roasting it as a supplement use, that is exactly what I'm roasting right there. Cause there's going to be no prop. There's going to be minimal energy property from the coconut oil as compared to a high quality MCT. And especially if it's not virgin coconut oil. And as far as the butter side of things, if it's not grass fed, you're not going to get any nutrient density in there. And it's basically just going to be a waste of calories. <laughs> so that's the gist of this video. Top BS keto supplements that you don't need. So hopefully this taught you some of the things about the ketogenic diet that you don't know. If you want me to talk about any other keto supplements, leave them in the comments because I will read them and answer them. Uh, <laughs> thanks everybody for all the support and go to my website, romanoketo.com if you want personal, personal coaching and I'll have some programs up there very soon. Thanks again, Anthony Romano, peace. Oh,